Today we consider how the next banking crisis could lead to a new monetary reset and how the ECB and the Fed could let the banks go bust. So let's dive on in. Now this channel provides global macro insights and champions the importance of sound money in a world gone crazy so please do consider subscribing. For many years now the banking sector has been in dire straits. The decision of governments globally to shut down their economies will unquestionably increase defaults of households and corporate borrowers uh, placing enormous strains upon highly leveraged banks. Indeed, banking stocks have sold off heavily, dramatically reducing the equity uh, held on the company's balance sheets. Undoubtedly, a huge risk is apparent in Europe, and we can see just how badly the top 600 European banks are faring in the SX7P index in this chart. Moreover, this excellent table highlights the global systemically important banks in order of the banks with the greatest apparent risk. Top of that list is Societe Generale, where its price to book ratio is 15.1%. That's the company's current market price as a percentage of its overall book value or balance sheet assets if you prefer. The second column highlights the bank's market capitalization to total assets and finally the leverage of the banks. Clearly there is enormous vulnerability amidst these large banks which pose a threat to the entire global banking system. In fact many are surprised how long these giant banks have survived. Others point out to the special support they have received from the devious central banks. Now just last month we saw the European Central Bank trademark its digital euro as it ramps up its progress towards a central bank digital currency. A recent media release uh, states that issuing a digital euro may become necessity in a variety of scenarios. Think of situations where people no longer prefer paying with cash or extreme events such as natural disasters or pandemics where other payment services no longer function. Of course other extreme events could also include banking crises. Now this is important because these central bank digital currencies are literally a current account with the central bank. And ever since the inception of the European Central Bank in 1999, its policies have seen over 4,500 small local banks close down, according to banking expert Professor Richard Werner. What's more is that Professor Werner's work has proven that the ECB has been unwilling to help drive an economic recovery. It could do this by buying non-performing loans at full market price in an effective asset swap. These assets can then be held on the ECB's balance sheet and the banks would be recapitalized. But as Professor Werner also highlighted in his amazing book, The Princes of the Yen, monetary policy is helpful in not being helpful. And so every previous crisis has seen an increasing concentration of the banking system. And in fact, the ECB is calling for further mer mergers and acquisitions to take place within the European banking sector. But as the testing on the CBDCs accelerates, it provides a possible way out of the ongoing crisis and offers the chance for a new monetary reset. Yes, a gold revaluation is entirely plausible and this is something that we discussed previously in this video. But as many point out, the banksters are desperate to avoid such an outcome. So another potential way out is to allow the banking system to fail. As loans go bad and are eventually written off, the money supply therefore contracts. Meanwhile, under this scenario, the people that lose their deposits amidst the ruins of failed banks will be offered their digital dollars, Fed coin or digital euros. And just remember, these CBDCs are literally designed to remove the need for a banking sector. Every previous crisis we have witnessed has resulted in an ever greater concentration of the banking sector.
What's more is that a bribe is likely to be needed to encourage people to move from conventional banking apparatus towards a newly created digital currency. The bribe certainly will be under one of two guises. First, it could be through stimulus payments, helicopter money, UBI style payments, or secondly, to provide the solution to those facing the potential loss of their banking deposits as a banking crisis ensues. And of course, such a dystopian outcome has worrying implications for freedom and privacy. Just look at the uh, info we have uh, from the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Agenda. Utilising 5G digital identity for vaccinations and increasing amounts of data to drive and improve artificial intelligence programmes. Certainly CBDCs fit the wider agenda and allow the possibility of negative interest rates and even time constrained currency which requires spending by a certain date. This of course helps to speed up the velocity of circulation and boosts inflationary expectations. But such a scenario would also fail to actually solve many of the wider macroeconomic issues. For instance, a gold revaluation would help to reduce the real size of national debts. Instead, the clear attempt made to reduce the real size of these debts under CBDCs would need to be via the stealth tax of inflation, together with increased taxation, which will greatly undermine the growth prospects for many years, particularly as these vast debt overhangs are enormously deflationary. What's more is that growing deflationary threats still present themselves. The long-term viability of such a plan is therefore enormously questionable and the need for a proper hard reset of the economic system could become even more necessary. But by that time, it seems highly likely that central banks would have gone a long way towards further concentration of the banking sector among ever fewer banks. I certainly foresee central banks supporting the banking sector until their CBDCs are ready to roll. But what also appears highly significant in an outcome which leads to far greater concentration in our banking systems, it is likely to greatly undermine economic growth as businesses are unable to access the finance that they need to actually grow and expand their operations in what would actually be a deflationary form of lending. You lend to businesses to provide them with capital goods, goods that help to produce other goods. This improves their productivity and their efficiency. If such finance is unavailable, then these businesses will not have the capacity to grow. It's great news for the likes of Amazon and other big multinational companies, but really not great for small and medium-sized firms. But let's leave the final words to Professor Werner, who says here CBDC means central bank current accounts, killing all remaining small local banks and finally also the big ones the Sovietization of the economy. The Soviet Union only had one bank, the central bank. With only the Fed left as the only bank, no more economic growth. Thanks so much for watching. Do consider subscribing and check out these other videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.